Hi folks, it's the Hogtie Champ with some news that some of you have been waiting to hear. Many of us have been wondering, what does YouTube think about this problem? Well guess what, I finally received a reaction from YouTube. I've been writing to YouTube for some time now. I posted the first part of PedoTube on June 11th. We had only recently learned about Wallio 777 and a few other foot fetishists with a preference for children's feet. I posted PedoTube 2, What Next, on June 23rd after I learned a bit more about the range of the problem. It's not just the foot fetishists. In fact, I should clarify, the foot fetishists themselves aren't even the problem. The problem is pedophiles. Some pedophiles like feet, some like duct tape, some like hand gagging. Most of the fetishes are included. In PedoTube 2, I think I was more clear in saying that most fetishists are interested in adults. What most of us are concerned about here are the pedophiles who use deception. They use video requests, dares, and phony stories about college courses and things like that to trick kids and teens into making videos for their collections. Among the group of us working on this part of the problem, we have a rather straightforward idea for YouTube. There's a small change they can make to their abuse reporting tool that would allow kids to alert YouTube to these questionable messages. When a pedophile sends, let's say, 400 pieces of perv spam, YouTube would discover the activity within a day or two. With very little effort, YouTube could make this place much less appealing to pedophiles. In the few days since the release of PedoTube 2, I've been receiving about 30 to 40 PMs per day, uh, most of them from kids. They tell their friends to watch and they write to tell me that they're glad they saw it. They also tell me about other dares and, and video requests they've received. Uh, that maybe I didn't know about. It's all a very positive sign. According to the YouTube Insight data, in the past three days over 900 views were by users who reported their age to be between 13 and 17 years old. Now many of the younger users fib about their age so the actual number of kids and teens who've seen PedoTube 2 is likely over a thousand. So what about YouTube? What do they have to say? Well, in response to PedoTube Part 1, they flag the video as may not be appropriate for minors. There's no explicit content, no minors in the video. All the footage is taken from YouTube videos that are not flagged. I know who false flagged the video. Now imagine the irony. A video that warns kids about pedophiles was flagged by a pedophile as not appropriate for minors. And of course I've written to YouTube about this, and I got the reaction that you would expect. Nothing. I've called Google only to be told that YouTube never takes calls. Not even calls warning them about pedophiles. I haven't heard one word from YouTube. Until today. And why do I know that some of you won't be surprised by this? But this is what they think of PedoTube 2. Now, I was mindful of the terms of use when I started the PedoTube series. I was aware of the impact of false flagging, so I made sure my videos contain no violations. The clips are short and used for educational purposes. Clearly fair use. The images are all taken from YouTube videos. Videos not flagged as inappropriate for minors. The subject matter is delicate, but treated in a, in a, in a mature and responsible fashion. There's absolutely no dock dropping. Where I mention a user's name, I do not apply a label or make accusations. Instead, I show the activity in comments or on channel pages, something any user has access to. In fact, in PedoTube 2, I put the links in the sidebar so users could conduct their own searches on YouTube to uh, look up the information themselves, rather than putting any sort of accusation in the video itself. I didn't try to get that label removed from the original PedoTube because I felt that PedoTube 2 was a better way to put things. So um, I did try to rehabilitate PedoTube 2. After 40 minutes of searching, I finally found the tool that one uses to report a falsely removed video. Um, I've heard from many users that it's pointless, but I'm a try it for yourself kind of guy. Clearly, they scrambled at YouTube's highly staffed headquarters. I received an email response within 10 minutes. Should I be even slightly surprised at this kind of smacks of a form letter? Note that they are unable to provide specific detail regarding your account suspension or your video's removal, whichever it might be. For more information about what it might be, why don't you go ahead and read the whole fucking guidelines document, which I already did before making the videos. Awesome. At one point in part one of PedoTube, I had said, when it comes to YouTube, there is no one at the helm. Now by that, I meant that all of this crap is automated. They don't monitor or review or judge. 
When enough people flag a video, then poof, away it goes. I didn't object to the flagging of part one. I thought the best thing to do was to move forward and improve the clarity of the message. However, part two was a clear and helpful message. I won't let pedophiles decide what is valid in this discussion. Therefore, I will upload it again. They will flag it again, YouTube will remove it again, and I will upload it again. Now eventually, YouTube will suspend my account. I will open a new account. Um, you'll recognize it because the first uploads will be the Pedotube series. Pedophiles usually open multiple accounts. They fake their identities. They produce no videos. They contribute nothing to the YouTube community. All they do is they deceive children to help build up their collections of you know, stroke material. They use multiple accounts to false flag those who criticize them. I believe it morally just to violate any rule that says I cannot re-upload Pedotube 2. The video contains no terms of use violations. The false flagging of this video is itself a violation, but nothing will be done about that. Also, when the Pedotube series is complete, all episodes will be made available to CTV and CBC. If news networks in your country might be interested, I'm willing to share. Just let me know. Originally, my videos were about the unfortunate problem of pedophiles on YouTube. Now, I must include mention of YouTube's willful neglect and their interference with our efforts to educate younger users. I'll, uh, I'll ask this favor of you. Um, when Pedotube 2 shows up on your list again, please open a window and, uh, and let it play, uh, even if you've already seen it. It'd be nice to, to have those views load up again. If you had rated it before, please rate it again. Also, if you feel the message is important, and only if you think it's important, important enough to share, then please mirror the video on your channel. If you don't know how to mirror a video, well, I don't know either, um, but I'll put up an annotation if I ever figure it out. Uh, myself, I will continue to work on the Pedotube series. I've, uh, I've learned some very interesting things over the last few days. So part three will, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I suppose I'll have to call it part four now. Part four will contain an even bigger surprise. The surprise is that you might be cheered up by it. I have some very, very good news for you.